in a remote village nestled deep within the Democratic Republic of the Congo, a tale of justice and accountability unfolded. It was March 2014, a fateful time when Germain Katanga, a central figure in the region's tumultuous history, found himself at the center of a trial that would shape the course of international justice. The charges against Katanga were nothing short of grave. He stood accused of being an accessory to heinous crimes, including murder, attacking a civilian population, destruction of property, and pillaging. These atrocities had stained the village of Bogoro in the Aturi district with bloodback in February 2003. The international community watched with bated breath as Trial Chamber 2 of the International Criminal Court, ICC, weighed the evidence in this critical case. The prosecution's case was built on the assertion that Katanga had played a pivotal role in these crimes committed by the Njidi militia. They argued that he had aided in the planning of the attack on Bogoro, which had been a deliberate assault on the predominantly Hema population. Yet, Katanga's involvement extended far beyond mere planning. He served as a vital link between weapons and ammunition suppliers and the militia responsible for executing the brutal acts. His efforts not only bolstered the militia's firepower, but also ensured their efficiency through logistical support facilitated by the airport in Aveba. The trial was a complex and painstaking process marked by intricate legal arguments and a multitude of testimonies. The prosecution initially sought to prove that Katanga was the principal perpetrator of these crimes, but the chamber ultimately dismissed this mode of liability due to insufficient evidence demonstrating that he had the authority to give or enforce orders. However, in a pivotal recharacterization of his liability, the chamber found Katanga guilty as an accessory under Article 25.3d of the Rome Statute. This decision held him accountable for murder, war crimes, and directing attacks against civilians and their property. In a striking move, the judges granted 366 victims the right to participate in the proceedings, represented by their legal counsels, allowing their voices to be heard and their experiences acknowledged. On March 24, 2017, the moment of reckoning arrived when Trial Chamber 2 issued an order for individual and collective reparations to the victims of Katanga's crimes. The judges awarded 297 victims with a symbolic compensation of USD 250 per victim, alongside collective reparations in the form of support for housing, income-generating activities, education aid, and psychological support. Given Katanga's financial destitution, the Trust Fund for Victims played a pivotal role in facilitating these reparations. But the legal odyssey did not end with the verdict. Appeals were filed only to be discontinued on June 25, 2014, by both the Defense for Katanga and the Office of the Prosecutor, cementing the judgment as final. Justice was not just about holding Katanga accountable, it was also about providing solace and reparations to the victims of his crimes. The Germain Katanga case marked a pivotal chapter in the relentless pursuit of justice and accountability for international crimes. It was a story of a nation, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, taking a step toward healing its wounds, and the global community witnessing the remarkable power of the ICC to hold individuals responsible for their actions, even amidst the most intricate legal challenges.